Can you give me a G, please, brother? I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice. Lift
for a moment. Brother Lewis, would you just accompany me here, please? Praise the Lord. Sorry I have to drop it on you like that. You are a brother, I know that I can just pull you up at any time. I wouldn't stay too far. Praise the Lord, it's it's a chorus from our dear brother himself. And I love that chorus so much because I call him up and he doesn't even know what he's singing. <laughs> but it is so wonderful when we can have one heart, one mind, one aim, one desire. And I know that my brother would not be upset with me as I call him because we have the same. You see what he's showing me? You see the witness yourself, right? He's showing me the right fist. So I want to stay, I better stay on the left. <laughs> it is still there, so I cannot hide. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you know, I have the body, I can take it. <laughs> Waiting in your presence. I would like my brother to start. I am here, Lord, waiting in your presence. Then he is going to be quiet. I am going to sing, I am here, Lord, waiting in your presence. And then we are going to sing, we are here, Lord, waiting in your presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a, that's a new addition. That is not on this album. <laughs> Give yourself, <laughs> sir. All right. As I'll put you to sit. <laughs>
possession of the Holy Ghost. He has come into our midst once again and ministered life to us all. Father, we thank Thee for these wonderful songs that have been given, many of them by the Holy Ghost over the years, that lift us and lift us really into new heights in Your glory. Father, as we turn to the written word tonight, speak to us in the depths of our spirit. We thank you for the meeting this morning, where we were reminded there are no excuses. And so, Lord, we make no excuses tonight, but we wish to consecrate ourselves totally, spirit, soul, and body. And we thank you for this wonderful move of the Spirit. Uh, hallelujah. That has made us who were nobodies uh, into somebody's in our God. Uh, with Jesus himself being glorified in all the ministration of the body. We thank you, Lord, tonight. And all of the people said, uh, Amen. Brother and Sister Lewis were already here 
at the, uh, when we got here. Oh, that's right, you were here, weren't you, when we got here? You were already here. And of course, we've worked together ever since. Um, but I will never cease to give thanks to God. I was 28 years old, as I said, and uh, now I'm not going to tell you how old I am. But that was a long time ago, 1973. And uh, this is now 43 years later. Do the math for yourself. Praise God. I won't tell you how old I am, but I'll tell you how old I'm going to be in October. I'll be 72. <laughs> old age, old age is creeping on. I'm not like these people who say, I'm never going to get old. Just wait around a while. <laughs> Everybody goes this way. <laughs> but there are many experiences in each level of living and each level of life. Yes. And all of them are beautiful. Yes. Praise His wonderful yes. and glorious name. As I told you, our son Joseph was uh, just a baby and he had his first birthday, in, number one, in Antigua. So he feels he's entitled to say he's an Antigua. So we'll accept that. And uh, our daughter Sharon, uh, Sharon was born in Antigua. And uh, she is a real Antiguan. The Antiguans will tell you so. And uh, ever since she was a little girl, she always said to me, reminded me, shortly after she could talk, I think it's Brother Henry, Elder Henry, who whispered it into her ear. And it was this, Daddy, you must remember, I'm an Antigua. It's Antigua. She'd say this over the years. And she'd say, it's Antigua to come from. <laughs> now, Daddy, you must remember what I said. It's Antigua to come from. And so now, the girl is so Antiguan. She's married, she has children. And, uh, and we have grandchildren, and uh, she has a wonderful husband. And now they're in the process, they brought, bought pop property in Antigua, and they plan to retire there sometime way down the road. And they come and they go. But not only is she Antiguan, she made sure each of the little children got their Antigua passports as citizen of Antigua and Barbuda. And then she got one for her husband, citizen of Antigua, Barbuda. And so, the, you know, what are you going to do? And she's Antigua she come from. <laughs> so, I am uh, embarrassed this morning when they announce the different countries that were here and who are, who are from those places. And, uh, and when they said Antigua, I didn't get up. And I always get up when they say Antigua. So I'm getting up right now. But all of the Antiguans stand with me. All of the Antiguans. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I would like to say about the Antiguans who are here. There are several sisters here tonight who have been a part of this way. Some of them from day one, from the very first meetings, from day one. And if you talk with them, you will find that these are women of the kingdom. They are women of the new order of God's spirit. And they will let nothing, no one, dissuade them from the high and the holy calling. They are mothers in Israel. And as we look around the room tonight, we see people from many of the islands where we have ministered over the years, and some of you go back also to the beginning, or nearly so, and you are strong in His power and in His might. I remember after we began in Antigua, we started to go out to the other islands, and uh, we went to Grenada, and, uh, and this brother said he was 20. I think you were about 12. No? <laughs> You're 20. <laughs> 13. Yes. You were 13. Oh, it's you who said you were 20. <laughs> were you really 20? 
Sunday. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk to you. He was just a kid yet, you know. And uh, in St. Vincent's, you were 13, and your wife younger yet. Huh? Yeah. But I remember you. I remember you from the very first meetings. Hallelujah. You stood out as people of the kingdom. Amen. You know, somehow we know one another. Praise God. Amen. We may not know one another after the flesh. Right. But isn't it true that when you meet the people of the kingdom, we know one another. Yes. Not after the flesh, yes. but after the spirit. Yes. And spirit communes with spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. Sometimes you meet people you've never met in your life at a time. And you say, oh, praise God, she's one of them. Praise God, he's one of them. Hallelujah. We are brothers. We are sisters. Yes, we are fellow believers. But we are more than fellow believers. We have heard the call to move on into the fullness of the great and glorious day of the kingdom of God, which is destined to fill the whole earth even as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Brother Holt Sr., I was my privilege to travel with him many places as a young person, and I learned a lot from him as a mentor and as from all of the brethren, but particularly because of traveling with him a lot, I would ask him a lot of questions, and his answers would really astound me, you know. Like when we went to Africa the first time, we had never been there, and we were looking, we were looking, and uh, I said to him, well, what are we looking for? And he said, we're looking for a man. That's all he said. We're looking for a man. We, and ever since, I've been looking for those of the kingdom. He said, we're looking for a man. And I said, how will we know him? He said, we will know him when we see him. Yes. Isn't that something? Yes. And so one day we're sitting in this little restaurant type place and here comes a man. Here comes a man. We never met him, but there had been some communication with him, but we had never met him. And he come right towards our table and Brother Holt whispered to me, this is the man we are waiting for. Simple as that. And he became, I believe, the first traveling deacon in Africa. He has now gone on to be with the Lord, as has Brother Holt. So we have learned that this is a move of the Spirit of God. It is not the work of man. It is not, with all due respect, it is not a denomination. It is not a part of any denomination. But there's a free flow, hallelujah, in union, in unity of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We have to be careful to respect one another, pray for one another, yes. lift up one another, yes. build up one another in the Holy Ghost. Yes. The deceiver is determined to break the unity yes. of the people of God. Yes. He will try to do it in your home. Yes. He will try to do it in your local church. And he has tried to do it from time to time in the universal church. So we must be alert at all times. He is seeking those whom he can devour. Those whom he can sort of just get a wee bit off track. Yeah. Not far, just a wee bit off track. And then they start to have these funny questions and funny ideas and everything gets goofy after a while with them. And they say, oh, we still love the Lord. They may love the Lord. But I'm telling you, it's one thing to love the Lord. And it's another thing to be faithful to the call of God that is on your life. Hallelujah. 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 And I have known good people like it. Good people. Better people than, than I am. Myself. And who have missed the way. Just missed the way. Well, maybe they didn't like their elders. Or maybe they didn't like the sister the way she carry on, or the brother, or the, you know, or who knows? The enemy don't care what it is, just so it's some little thing, just some little thing, you see. And they want to mash up the church, and they want to mash up your life. Yeah, 
Now, as I said, sometimes you go on, people who walk like that, they go on being a Christian and they even join some group or, you know, or that type of thing. Their intention is good. But they are never the same again until they get back into the center of His will and to the call of God that was upon your life. And the further you get away from that gift and ministry that was, is uniquely yours, the further you get away from it, the harder it is to come back. Yeah, that's right. So I say to you tonight, thank God we're home. Amen. There's a home. Yes. It's the homeland of the soul. Yes. It's the homeland of the spirit. Uh, praise God. You know how they used to say, there's no place like home sweet home. This is sweet tonight. Amen. Before I turn to Holy Scripture, I want to make another comment about um, the singing in the Spirit that we heard today. We heard a little of it today. When the whole congregation rose up and sang like, uh, like a mighty choir, you see. Do you know this goes back to the beginnings of this move of the Spirit? It was something that was restored in the move of the Spirit. Paul said, I will sing with the Spirit, yes. and I will sing with the understanding also. Songs and hymns, beautiful, and spiritual songs, or songs in the Spirit given by the Spirit of God. In the early years already, they began to call it the heavenly choir, and people would write about it. People uh, who had heard it, not necessarily a part of the move as we know it, but they heard about it and they would write little articles and little comments in the history about it and they called it the heavenly choir. And they said there were times when the congregation would be hymning their praises as we do, as we're led by the Spirit, and then all of a sudden there would be a lull and it was as if you could hear voices. And many testify of hearing voices that did not come from the congregation, but voices that came from the heavenly visitors, the angels on high. And there were times when they would sing together with us, praise God. You could hear that blending, praise his name. In Edmonton, when this thing really was outpoured uh, in Edmonton, and the, and the uh, singing in the spirit, as we call it, uh, was restored. One of the writers, who was not a part of this work, but one of the writers tells about in, in the people singing this, this heavenly choir singing in the, in the great meeting. There were hundreds of people, I believe, and they were singing these hymns unto God, hymning their praises to God. And the man said there were businessmen walking outside on the street where the meetings were held so during the daytime. And they heard the sound and it had great volume and great power. And a couple of these businessmen said to each other, what is it, a great organ? Is it some great organ like the Anglicans and Catholics friends have? Is, was it, is that what it is? And they had no idea what it was. And they were drawn closer and closer and closer. And there was no organ, no piano playing, nothing. And the people could hear instruments playing. Hallelujah. A part of that heavenly choir. Hallelujah. Oh. like great organs and pianos and there were no organs and there were no pianos in, in that singing in the spirit uh, oh praise God and these gentlemen came into the meeting and so overcome by the power of the Holy Ghost yes. that they prostrated businessmen prostrated themselves in the floor before the Lord of glory 
And then they write in various meetings, of course we've seen this and heard this many times, in various meetings, how there would be, uh, when the singing of the Spirit would sort of come down a bit, then someone would get up and sing this beautiful new song that had never been sung before. But I think what is so wonderful, when they write about these beautiful new songs that were never sung before, it wouldn't only be one person. Sometimes it would be. Another time it would be a duet. But one would be over here, and one would be over here, and they would be singing the same song that had never been sung before on one another. Praise this wonderful and glorious thing. And then sometimes there would be trios and there would be groups of people singing. We too must look to God for more of this. We must wait on God for more of this. I talked to one of the old timers, a sister, at, when I was at North Battleford now, uh, who was there in the beginnings of, the, of this move of the Spirit. I like to talk to those. There aren't too many left from that time. And uh, I said, Is there, are there any differences that you're noticing among us today from them? And she said, one of the things that, that, that I wanted to point out, she said, is when we would sing in the spirit, she said, we wouldn't just, you know, drop down. She said, sometimes we would sing for an hour or more. The whole congregation like one mighty choir. And then there would be that coming down. And she said, I'm afraid sometimes we come down too quick now and just wait for somebody to sing. Well, <coughs> all I know is we must be led by the Spirit of God. But if He wants us to sing as a great and mighty choir, and He wants the angels to come in and sing among us, and He wants the instruments that are not present to begin to play in the spirit, we shall receive it. Praise his wonderful name. What a glorious day. I would like to um, begin uh, from, uh, with the scriptures tonight. Uh, with the, uh, let's start with Mark. I'm sorry, with, uh, with Luke. And Jesus, this is speaking of Jesus, in Luke the ninth chapter, it says, Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. We heard about this. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. In other words, get your priorities right. Get your priorities straight. Remember, it is the same Jesus who said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. But he said, go and preach the kingdom of God. Verse 61, and another said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looks back, that's very much in my heart, and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. We have always warned as the people gathered in this move of the Spirit, don't look back, don't think back, don't look back, don't get sidetracked to the north or the south or the east or the west. Stay right in the center, hallelujah, where his life is flowing and where he has set you. Make your calling sure. Make your election sure. He says, and then these things, <coughs> if you do these things, Peter said, you shall never fall. The church, I'm speaking of the body of Christ now, the church is the channel through which God will reveal his kingdom to the world. He did it in the past, he's doing it in the present. And he will do it in the future. We are to set our affections, as we were exhorted this morning, on things which are above. <coughs> Excuse me. Where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Come out from among them, we are admonished, and be separate. 
you know, careful, be careful about compromise. You compromise in the little things, pretty soon it's easier to compromise in the bigger, in the more important, and the larger things. Always remember that we are to remain forever on the foundation. The foundation uh, which he has laid. The foundation is the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. We are so fortunate in this move of the Spirit, in this move of restoration, as I sometimes like to call it, to have among us today, in the earth, living apostles and living prophets, true evangelists and pastors and teachers, with Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. Many of us have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for all. And hopefully before this meeting is over, yeah. if the, uh, these meetings are over, you will have the opportunity to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Spirit. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not God's ultimate purpose for you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is rather the doorway, the doorway into your spiritual gifts and spiritual ministry. Yes. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is important. Speaking in other tongues, hallelujah, as the Holy Ghost makes utterance through you in your prayer life especially is very, very important. Brother York, who has gone to be with the Lord, who is a real prophet in this room of the Spirit, used to tell us, be sure you speak in tongues every day. Amen. And he was very bold, you know. I might be a little bold sometimes, but he was really bold. And he would say, now, hear me? Everybody who is here. Now, I'm not asking you to do this. I'm sorry, but he said, he said, everybody who is here, how many of you have spoken in tongues today? And then he would say, put up your hand. You don't have to put up your hand for me, but for him, he made sure you put up yes. your hand. And of course, if you hadn't, he figured it was time to bring you up to the altar so we can pray that you have a fresh release of the Holy Spirit. And you know, we all need that fresh release. We need that fresh endowment with power from on high. Why? So that we might work the works of God. <coughs> and the works of God that have been entrusted into us, yes. unto us, is, really is the gifts and ministry that is uniquely ours and uniquely our own. But the fullness of God, it opens the door way to the fullness of God. It is a threshold experience. I could say it is a, a, a doorway experience um, which leads us into a life in the spirit, the crucified life, it's sometimes called. Jesus said, except you take up your cross and follow me, praise God, you will not enter into the kingdom. But the fullness of God in man is a growth and process accomplished when one yields themselves to the ministry of the Spirit of God after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'd like to turn for just a moment here to Matthew's uh, Gospel, Matthew 4. Verse 16, I want to read this to you. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. Yes. Is that you? It's me. Is that you? It's me. People who sat in darkness saw great light. 
and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, life is sprung, light is sprung up. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise the Lord. God's objective is not just the few here and a few there throughout history, but God's objective is the whole world. Brother Sunbo said it can't be not too long ago. He said God's purpose in restoring the church, and God's purpose is to restore the church and ultimately all of creation and bring it back. <coughs> excuse me, into harmony with himself. Let's not lose sight of God's objective. He is working out in, certainly an eternal weight of glory in you and in his house. <coughs> his loving objective is that ultimately every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Simple as that. To the glory of God that Jesus Christ is in heaven. Whether in heaven above, whether on the earth, or whether under the earth, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, that's an important word, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sometimes people, I've heard preachers say, well that'll happen, it's in the Bible, but it will happen by coercion. It will happen by force. And some of them will just have to be beaten into submission. That's not my God. That's the other fellow. You yeah. understand? That's not my God. Amen. God is a loving God. Amen. And the scriptures say, and you find me any church out there that teaches this. I just don't know of them. And it's very simple. The scriptures say every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Confess to the glory of God that Jesus Christ is Lord. The same holy apostle penned the words earlier to the church when he said that no man can confess that Christ is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So the greatest revival the world has ever known, the greatest revival the world has ever seen, excuse me, <laughs> thank the Lord. <laughs> Brother brought me water. I was just about dried out. <laughs> I hope the message is not dry. <laughs> I really appreciate that. <clears throat> the climate still takes me a while to get used to, but um, I'm coming along. Praise his wonderful name. Amen. Now back to where we were. That God's objective is the entire creation. That all things shall find their one head in Christ Jesus. But you know this morning, it might not be as easy as it sounds when you say it. Because of the fact that no man can confess that Christ is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And I submit to you today, in this fair land of Trinidad and Tobago, which has many religions. It's a land where Islam... Uh, is established. It's a land where uh, Hinduism is established. It's a land where Rastafarianism is established. It's a land where Christians of every stripe and type are established in this land. It's a very multicultural land and it's a great land. As far as I'm concerned, I love Trinidad. Not quite as much as Antigua, but I love Trinidad. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah. But no man can come to know the Lord except through Jesus. This we have to understand. Everyone must come the same way. Everyone. Every sinner lost and hopeless, because that's all of humanity, must come the only way there is. And that is the one who declared, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way. And no man 
and cometh to the Father except by me. So one has to be saved in order to be saved. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You must be born again. So we've got some work to do. We've got a story to tell to the nations. Praise the name of the Lord. At this point, because there's so many people listening, I don't know how many people tonight, but lots of people from many countries in the world are listening to us tonight uh, on this uh, broadcast. I call it broadcast. Is that the right word? Whatever it is, it is. It's going out to the nations. Live stream. Live stream. See, I don't even own a cell phone, so you must excuse my... Is that what? Brother Miller don't have a cell phone? No, I don't. I don't have a cell phone. But you have a television? Yes. <laughs> you, have a, you have a landline phone? Yes. How come you don't have a cell phone? Oh, I don't know. I'm just stuck in another time, I guess. But uh, thank God for, uh, for those things because we can go out to the ends of the earth. And there will be people listening to us who come from many of these types of backgrounds that we're talking about tonight. You too need to be born again. You too need to come to the cross. You too need to be saved. There is no other way to God. Some people teach today, well you can belong to any religion you want to or any organization you want to as long as you're a good living person, you're a decent person, you know that uh, all is well and when you die you'll go to be with the Lord. That is not true. Have you noticed how many times in funerals they send so many people to heaven who you know live nothing but hell upon the face of the earth? But they're going to heaven, they're going to see them in heaven. You're not going to see them in heaven until they're born again. You must be born again by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. That which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. You must be born again. But God has made provision for that. And God is determined that he shall have everyone and have them all. You see, you may be a, and this is not disrespectful, you may be a good, you put any name in there, a religion, as far as a good, clean, living, decent person, you know, but if you don't know God, it means nothing as far as eternity is concerned. Something that used to confuse me, I had a, uh, a couple of acquaintances who were um, atheists. You know, an atheist claims they don't believe in God. There's no God. And some of them, I watched them, and they live such clean lives. Yeah. <laughs> they shocked me. And such moral lives. They didn't curse, they didn't drink, they didn't carouse, no bacchanal, no carnival, nothing. They just live in ordinary, we would say decent, upstanding citizen life. And by all accounts, then they should be, when they die, God should take them right into, into heaven. Uh-uh. You must be born again. <coughs> it's a shame when atheists live better lives than some Christians. Isn't that the truth? Another thing we should make clear. We have said it, I know, from the pulpit many times, but it's good to be reminded that every person, every person who is born again, every person who is saved, is our brother and sister in Christ. That's very important. You say, well, what if he's a Baptist? If he's saved, he's born and born again? That's my brother. That's my sister. You say, well, what if he's an Anglican? I say, well, if he's saved, if he's born again, that's my brother. That's my sister. Somebody said, I'll get you on this one, Brother Miller. What if he's a Catholic? I say, look, man, if he's born again, if he's saved, that person is my brother and sister in Christ. Always remember, there are many levels of growth. There are many levels of understanding, you see. Isn't that true? We've come that way ourselves. 
many levels of growth, many levels of understanding, a lot of good Christian people out there in all of the denominations and non-denominational denominations that are out there all over the place. And they are all our brother and sister, if they're born again. Now sometimes I meet with preachers, they meet up with different ministers of these different churches, some of whom I've named. And uh, <clears throat> they don't understand what I'm talking about if I talk to them like I'm talking to you. But so you meet every man on his or her level of experience. If that person tells you, I met a Catholic priest not too long ago in my own city where I live, and he told me that he is a born again Christian and he has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I said to that brother, my desire for you, I didn't say, well, then how come you're still a Catholic, you know? I said to him, my desire for you, brother, is that you, together with all of us, might be filled with all the fullness of God. My prayer for you is that you will press in to God. And you know, if that heart, his heart, is of that new nature, he will press into God. And changes will just keep coming like they do in you and me. Keep coming and coming and coming and coming. You see. Praise his wonderful Hallelujah. and glorious name. The earth is in turmoil tonight. We sometimes act as if it's going to go on this way, go on forever. It will not. Its conclusion is coming. The axe is now at the root of the tree. And all that God has not established is to be cut down. There's coming a great judgment day in the earth. And we say this, and I hope we mean it. Let that judgment begin in me. Let it begin in you. May all of that that is in you and all of that that is in me that is not of God, hallelujah, be burned out by the power of the Holy One of Israel. Glory, glory, glory. So the cup of iniquity in the earth is full now and it is running over. But God is preparing an army, a spiritual army, an army of saints which will result in the great end time harvest. I'd like to turn to Revelation Book of Revelation, chapter 7. For a moment. In verse number, um, verse number 9. Listen to this closely. And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. And one of the elders answered saying unto me what are these who are who are these which are arrayed in white robes and where did they come from and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said unto me these are they which came out of great tribulation yes. and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. I listen, I used to listen to the old time preachers, some of my friends back in the old order. 
who preached all the time that once the tribulation hits the earth, it's all over. Nobody will be saved in tribulation. And here I just read that these are they which have come out of great tribulation yes. and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God Amen. and serve Him night and day in His temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Is that the Bible? Amen! It's the word of the living God. It's the yea and the amen. So we invite all who are listening tonight around the world to give your heart to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. If you are one who has stepped off the foundation to which you have been called, if you are one that has wandered away, we want you to know that's the way of the cross that still leads home. Yes. We are here for you. He is here for you. We shall welcome you. Hallelujah. Come home. Come home. Come home. Yes. I remember driving through Minnesota in the U.S. and seeing an advertisement or advertisement, as the Americans say, advertisement and the uh, advertisement was happened to be from a Catholic church, Saint somebody or other. And the advertisement was to yes. people who had left them. Yes. And they and they. Come home. Come home. Come home. Hallelujah. And get your feet set again on the solid. It's like with the prodigal son, the father went out to the gate every day with him and his boy. He went out to the gate and he leaned on his staff, the elderly man that he now was, and I don't think his eyesight was too good anymore, and he leaned on that staff and he looked down the road, just looking down the road. I don't know how long he looked down that road. But he looked down that road until that boy made his way home. And when that boy came home, talk about dancing. I don't know if you could even dance enough for that one, brother boy. <laughs> the dance, the shouting, they killed the fatted calf. They put a ring on it. Maybe you know. Never ceased. 
Yeah. He didn't like to see me on the street. If you see, oh the Lord, I'm sure he said to himself, his brother Miller, I'm again, brother Miller coming down the street, he slipped into the closest store. You know? <laughs> he didn't see me. He didn't want nothing from there. But uh, one day, you see, you come to the end of yourself. One day, the Lord brought him home. We were all in that little church in Seaview Farm, praising God like we did tonight. And all of a sudden, when the holy altar of God was open, he walks in. If I remember right, he was standing just outside and came out of the dark <laughs> into the marvelous light of God. And you know, when that brother came in repentance, to be restored into the high and holy home, coming home, yes. coming home, yes. never more yes. to roam. Praise God. Yes. Open wide your arms of love. Yes. He's coming home. And we should look to others. There are others here. So I'm here right now to bear witness to having had that very same experience. And they made their way. Yes, I saw your hand, sister. I remember when it came home. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for everyone who has come. Open wide. Do we know that song? Coming home, coming home. Could you come, brother, and lead us in tonight? May our hearts be so open to God. We too come home. Maybe we haven't gotten very far.